Hello everybody. Sometime back in 2009, I ordered a Delrin stamp to mark my logo on my leather products. I used the stamp to mark thousands of items over the years, but it was starting to wear out and wasn't really usable anymore. Since I have the ability to laser engrave my logo, I've been doing that for maybe the last year and a half. The laser works great, but sometimes it's difficult to align the logo in the exact right spot. And sometimes I don't remember to apply the logo until the very end. At that point, it's almost impossible to apply. I've been wanting to have a new stamp made with my updated logo anyways, so I placed an order for two different sizes of stamps from leatherstampmaker.com. I figured while I was at it, I might as well incorporate a press of some sort to help apply the stamp more consistently. The Leather Stamp Maker website had a few demonstration videos and they were using a six ton bench shop press from Harbor Freight. The price was right, so I went ahead and social distanced my way to town to buy the press. And now that I've pulled all the parts out of the box, let's put it together. The first step in the assembly process is to attach the angle iron feet to the vertical posts. The instructions say to finger tighten all connections until assembly is complete. But these nuts are a little difficult to get to at the end, since it means laying the completed press on its side. If I were you, I would square the post with the feet and tighten these nuts down before moving on. The next step is to attach the bottom spreader to the vertical leg post assemblies. The upper and lower crossbeam assemblies look almost identical to the bottom spreader, but take note that the upper and lower crossbeams have additional holes in the middle for the press pin guide. The press apron goes on next. The only thing that holds this in place is gravity and the support pins. Unfortunately, there's no spring detents or any other type of retainment method to keep the pins from falling out while moving the press around for assembly. The press pin guides need to be attached to the upper and lower cross beams. Be careful not to tighten these down too tight since the threads in the cross beams strip out pretty easily. The instructions don't say anything about the differences between the upper and lower cross beam assemblies. At first glance, they look identical. However, the holes in the end of the lower cross beam are smaller than the holes in the upper cross beam. Install the lower cross beam into the holes on the leg assemblies. I didn't notice the difference at first, so I had to go back and flip the parts around. The directions for the header support assembly say to tighten the connections enough to avoid wobbling. You'll need to attach the springs to the small bolts in an upcoming step, but if the large or small bolts are too tight, you won't be able to attach the spring. So just leave all of these nuts fairly loose. This is the point where I realized I had the upper and lower crossbeam assemblies reversed, so I'm flipping them right now. Here you can see the obvious size difference between the mounting holes. The next step is to install the upper crossbeam assembly and the header support assembly. The instructions suggest having a second person help with this step. That's probably a great idea. Be sure to attach the header supports to the outside of the vertical leg assemblies, or you'll spend at least 30 minutes trying to figure out why the holes won't line up like I did. Hang the springs on the small bolts, then tighten the header bolts enough to help remove the wobble from the header assembly. Insert the eye bolts into the ram plate and thread the nuts onto the bolt approximately one half of an inch. 
Then insert the ram press pin into the guide plates. Level and square the entire assembly and tighten all nuts and bolts except for the eye bolts. Lift up on the ram plate and attach the eye bolts to the bottom of the springs. Place the ram on top of the ram plate and then tighten the nut on the eye bolts until the piston on the ram is securely captured by the piston ring on the bottom of the header assembly. I didn't realize it at the time I placed my stamp order, but Leather Stamp Maker also sells a hydraulic press conversion kit that is designed to work with the Harbor Freight 6-ton bench shop press. It comes with a flat piece of 3 8 inch thick steel that nestles into the base of the press. And it also includes a collar that fits onto the ram press pin. The collar is threaded on the bottom so you can attach the brass stamp to the bottom if you want it permanently mounted to the press. Since I have two different sizes of stamps, I'll just keep mine separate for now. The collar has two set screws to help lock it onto the ram press pin. To install the collar, you'll have to use the hydraulic press to push the ram press pin down into the collar until it bottoms out. Then tighten the set screws. I've had these brass stamps sitting on the shelf for a month or two, just waiting until I could do an unboxing for you guys. I knew I wanted a press to go along with them, so I'm glad to finally be able to look at them and get everything on video. The stamps are cut from 3 8 inch thick solid brass on a CNC machine. I had them machine one stamp at one inch wide and the other at three quarters of an inch wide for tighter spaces. I wasn't sure how well my logo would work at these sizes, but I have to say I'm very impressed with the amount of detail these stamps are able to achieve. This video is not sponsored in any way. I purchased the press and the brass stamps on my own. I couldn't be more happy with the quality of the stamps, and I'm looking forward to using them on future projects. If you're in the market for a custom maker's mark, I'd highly recommend you check out the folks at theleatherstampmaker.com. And that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my website at adamsleatherworks.com for patterns, templates, leather holsters, and other cool stuff. Take care and see you later.